Hey guys, today I wanted to discuss the current state of the OnlyFans industry as a whole. I get quite a lot of questions on all types of things related to like, are you too late to start on OnlyFans? Is now a good time? What is the current market like? And what sort of changes are we going to see? So I just thought I'd run through all of those very quickly and give my like thoughts and opinions towards everything. So question number one, and probably the most frequent one that I will get from both models and guys who are looking to start an OnlyFans agency is, am I too late to the OnlyFans party? Have I missed out on this opportunity? For me, the answer is like 100% no. I think that now is still like as good of a time as any to get into the OnlyFans space. Personally, I'm not seeing like any, if it like we're making more money than ever, the only thing that kind of changes and that you have to be used to within the OnlyFans space is it's a relatively new business. I mean, it's been around for three plus years now, but in the grand scheme of things, that's still like a pretty new industry. So things are constantly changing and constantly evolving. Like the acquisition channels that work are changing all of the time. When I say all the time, every like couple of months, we'll generally see like a new cycle come through every six months or so. So things are changing and you have to be quite dynamic and quite like fast paced in your approach. You have to be testing new channels or have access to people who are testing new channels and willing to share them with you in order to stay ahead of the crowd and what everyone else is doing. So that is like the one point that I will make. If you think that you can just stick with the same channels and you're always going to see the same results, that's not the case. You see like up and down results like generally very much up and then they start to come down a little bit as the channels get oversaturated at least that is what i have found and that doesn't mean that you cannot maintain or even increase the current revenue it just means that particular channel isn't going to be the best one for you anymore and you need to explore other ways of marketing and promoting your only fans profile so that is where having some experience in marketing is going to be like very beneficial in this space which also leads me on to the next question that i get is and related actually is only fans like oversaturated again i think the answer is no i think this is like a huge industry there's no shortage of guys willing to spend money who are lonely and willing to spend money on this type of content there's really no shortage at all if anything i think it's probably getting worse and there are guys who are becoming like more and more lonely so i personally think there's a growing customer base is it oversaturated in terms of the number of models who are doing it Every day, there are going to be like multiple new girls who decide to start an OnlyFans profile. But again, I do not believe it's oversaturated. I think there's more girls doing it than there ever is. But I think it's quite easy to get ahead of the crowd because most people don't have a clue what they're doing when it comes to the marketing. So I've never, really never had an issue there at all. If you were just focused on Reddit, where you've got like thousands of other girls who are also just like spamming their OnlyFans profile and you haven't got a good strategy in place and you're just kind of following the crowd and doing what everyone else is doing, of course, you're not going to achieve any like extraordinary results because you're not doing anything different to everyone else. Why would you expect any type of different results? Whereas if you're testing out like other acquisition channels such as we are, like Tinder is performing probably the best it ever has for us. And the reason for that is because Tinder is cracking down on people doing the type of stuff that we were doing, people who are doing like Tinder promotion for OnlyFans, Tinder is really cracking down on it, which means that amateurs get kicked off the platform. They just get their accounts banned and give up on it as an acquisition channel. And we have perfected a setup that is literally working better than ever. So we're seeing like insane returns from Tinder at the moment. And yeah, because most of our competition seems to be getting kicked off or they just aren't able to like scale, we're just absolutely, I would say we're just dominating Tinder as a platform. It's really going quite well. But Again, with that being said, in six months time, the primary acquisition channel that we use may most likely will change over to something else. And as like in my case, as an OnlyFans marketer, my job is to stay ahead of the curve and try to, I like we're constantly testing like new acquisition channels and new strategies on existing channels. I would say probably every week, definitely every two weeks, we are testing out a new strategy to see if we can get it to work. But no, I don't believe that OnlyFans is oversaturated. I think there's a lot of people doing it, but I think it's 95% of people don't have a good marketing strategy in place. So it's very easy to just perform much better than they are. Do I need an agency as an OnlyFans model? I'm obviously quite biased in answering this. I believe that you do. However, I would encourage 
every single girl, if you are thinking of doing it, try to do it yourself first. Because if you are able to pull it off, of course, you've saved yourself a commission percentage. But the real reason that I'm saying to do that is because you will have a real understanding of the amount of work that goes into an OnlyFans profile, and particularly the amount of work that goes into making an OnlyFans profile successful. Once you try it yourself and realize all of the moving parts, number one, you're going to have a much better understanding of OnlyFans in general and what to actually do. So that means you can ask much better questions when you're partnering with an agency and you'll also have a better idea of how good of a job they are doing. But more to the reason I suggest you to do it yourself is you will appreciate all of the work that goes into growing an OnlyFans profile. Unfortunately, it's not quite as easy as what it's sometimes made out to be as if you just take your top off and get your boobs out and all of a sudden you're making like 30k per month. It's really not the case. There's OnlyFans needs to be treated as a business. I've said this many times before. You need sales, marketing, content production, uh, accounting, taxes, it is literally a business. As much as we're selling like adult content and people often get a little bit confused and they think it's just like a girl doing this in her spare time. If you want to make like the real money, five, six figures per month, it really needs to be treated as a business and you need like multiple people working on your profile. And personally, I think there's just not enough time in the day for an OnlyFans model to be creating and performing all of the responsibilities that she needs to be doing in terms of content production while simultaneously managing a team of seven to 10 people is really what's needed. Working on that exact profile from marketing through to sales and through to the actual sort of content planning and so on. It's just too much responsibility like for one person, like you really need all of the processes in place. So at the very minimum, I strongly encourage you to outsource a lot of the labor, a lot of the work, perhaps to the Philippines, wherever you choose to, some cheaper part of the world. But yeah, I personally believe that a much easier route is just to go down the route of working with an OnlyFans agency, where as much as you're giving a percentage commission away, they are bringing all of that expertise to the table that they have from launching however many models they have launched. They've made the mistakes before and they know all of the shortcuts, or at least they should do, on how to successfully launch an OnlyFans model. But I would also encourage you just to go ahead and try it yourself, just so that you can understand the value that the OnlyFans agency is actually bringing to the table. Next question is, how much time is needed to be a successful OnlyFans creator? Kind of a difficult question to answer. I'll do my best. I guess it varies. But I guess I can only really talk from my experience. So I will talk from our models. For the first sort of 60 to 90 days, we have set scripts that we will ask them to create. This, this is template content that escalates. So we will tell them we need these specific, like these five to seven pieces of content and you need to be in this outfit and this is what you need to be doing. And they're just like a couple of minutes each. So we will get all of that created. Then we need all of the like promotional content for social media. Instagram, Reddit, TikTok, and everything there, and a few other channels as well. Then we need like unique content for making out the, the Tinder profiles. And then we need like ongoing promotional content. So for the first two to three months, we would need about two to three hours per day from each of our models to essentially they need to become like a content machine and they need to just churn out a load of content and get that over to us to allow us to do our jobs. But once that initial time has passed, like once, yeah, it's probably about 90 days to be more realistic. Once the initial 90 days has passed, we've built out a huge like library of content that we're able to use, we're able to repurpose, we're constantly selling the same content on OnlyFans. So at that point, the workload of the OnlyFans model should actually drop quite significantly and it should become quite passive, maybe an hour or so per day. And that will mostly be on creating like custom content and then a bit of promotional content content for, for the various different channels. But yeah, mostly for selling custom content to, to clients. Next up, what are realistic earnings potentials as an OnlyFans creator? Again, like a very question, like of course people earn anywhere on OnlyFans from like $100 up to millions of dollars per month, depending on like your audience size. For me, like realistic earnings, if a model is like truly committed, and what I mean by that is if they, if they uh, OnlyFans, like the money is made over the long term for us, so it's like a real compounding effect. So we would expect to be adding on about an extra $10,000 in monthly recurring revenue for each month that we manage a model. And it, that would probably hit a cap at around 60 to 80k 
per month. At that point, like the cancellation rate kind of catches up and that is where we would expect to grow a model to. However, you're looking at about six to eight months is like a pessimistic timeframe, but it's like a realistic one to give. Like we have had cases where we've grown models faster than that, where we've literally hit the ground running in month one and we were bringing in like 30 or 40K by month two. But that's an anomaly to be completely honest. Like it was a very good launch. I wish we had them all the time, but generally OnlyFans is like a little bit slower and you need models who are consistent and they're in it for the long term. It's not going to be like a get rich quick scheme. We can be earning by like month two, we should be bringing in like minimum of like 10 to 15K per month. But yeah, it really depends on like the output of the model. That's what it all comes down to. And the other like major factor is like, how open is the model to what is she open to selling like all types of upsells? Because of course, if we're saying no to 50% of the custom requests or like the video requests that customers have, it's essentially, we're going to see like a 50% drop in revenue from upsells, which is going to have a significant impact. Yeah. But so anywhere from, if you're doing it yourself, I don't know, I think like 10 to 15 K is like quite a good number. We hear of some girls who are doing like 30 K plus by themselves, but that's, it's really quite rare. Again, I made a video on this before 95% of people don't make anything on OnlyFans. They make about a thousand dollars for you to be in the top 5% of OnlyFans creators. It takes about a thousand dollars, which means 95% of people literally don't earn anything. On to some more, I guess, like broader questions about like the OnlyFans industry as a whole. One question I get quite a lot is will OnlyFans be shut down, which I guess is a perfectly valid question. If people are going to be investing a lot of time into building a business and building a brand like around this is a perfectly valid question to ask. I cannot answer that. I like, I obviously cannot say if OnlyFans like will be shut down. Personally, I'm not expecting that to happen, at least in like, the coming years. There was a situation before where they had an issue with Visa and MasterCard who said that they had to stop selling adult content, stop selling pornography on the site. And Pornhub have actually had this same issue. And I believe they moved over to crypto. So I don't believe like OnlyFans will actually be shut down. I think it's just got so huge now that there will always be a way to find like a creative solution. But regardless, if OnlyFans ever was shut down, this industry as a whole isn't going anywhere. The platform itself may change. If we look at social media, it started off with MySpace, ended up moving to Facebook, then Instagram, and now TikTok. Like the platform that this type of content consumption is being hosted on may change. For example, it could move from OnlyFans to Fansly. That is definitely a possibility. And it could be for like, a, if anyone's dealt with OnlyFans support, they will know that they're actually pretty like useless, like really quite bad. So. OnlyFans itself currently dominates the space. Like the difference is literally like Coca-Cola versus some unknown cola brand in like a local supermarket. The difference is really that much. Trust me, I've tested this. We had a model that we were originally promoting on Fansly, which is like the second largest competitor to OnlyFans. And she was making about $50 per day at the time. And like, we were working so hard. We couldn't have her using OnlyFans because it wasn't supported in her country. So we thought we'd, we'd try out Fansly. So we were making about $50 per day. And in the end, we found a workaround to get her onto OnlyFans platform. And on the first day, she literally brought in $500 and was consistently bringing in $500 per day. That's no over exaggeration at all. That shows you the difference in conversion rate compared to Fansly, the second largest alternative compared to OnlyFans. So yeah, currently like OnlyFans just literally owns the space. However, Fansly as a platform, in my opinion, is actually better, particularly for creators. Customer support is much better. Payout options are also actually much better. And the customer support, like the overall experience is much better. The customer support is much better as well. OnlyFans customer support is, is diabolical. It's really, really, really quite bad. Particularly like I actually had 6K, was it? Literally just frozen and it's just, they just don't even reply. And it's been like two or three months now. I've just given up trying to chase it up, but it's unacceptable if you think about it for that to happen. However, because OnlyFans is just such a strong brand, I don't even bother going over to an alternative. The thing that could cause a shift like that would be for OnlyFans to have some type of restriction in place or for all of the creators as a whole to decide that we are going to move over to Fansly. In my opinion, the customers don't really care where they're consuming the content, whether it's Fansly, OnlyFans, or any of these other competitors. It's based on where the creators are deciding to post this. So there could be some type of mass migration, but it would have to take like a huge event in order to trigger something like that. So it's not something that I personally worry about. I think the space is too big to be shut down now. And there will always be a way that creators are looking to sell their content, particularly when they've had a taste of how much money there is to be made.
what other changes can we expect to see in the OnlyFans space? So I've mentioned like the customer support already of OnlyFans. Uh, I, that's due to OnlyFans seeing like hyper growth. And I've been in a situation like that before, and it's quite hard to maintain, keep up the level of customer service. Uh, when you're just onboarding a, an insane amount of users every day. So I do empathize with that. I, I'm not quite as big as OnlyFans, but I've been in a situation like that before. The big changes that I think we can expect are this year, I think agency-wise, we're going to see like a separation of the men from the boys. And what I mean by that is the, you can hear quite a lot of like horror stories of like specific agencies and like what happens. And I had a girl messaging me the other day saying like an agency that she was working with, were like trying to sell her content on the side and not give her like just all types of like funny things like this. And there's no reason for it. There's enough money to be made on OnlyFans that you don't need to try to like fuck over the model essentially in any way. Like there's a ton of money to be made on OnlyFans directly and you will make more money in like a long-term partnership with the model so i think that you're going to see like right now there's maybe two or three big names in like the only fan space and i think that they're going to really build quite strong brands it's starting to happen already they're building brands around only fans agency but making it more legitimate they're calling it like an influencer marketing agency so they will also do things like negotiating brand deals and so on for the girls that they're managing. So it's like a talent management agency, but all of the talent does only fans. But yeah, it's just like a more like legitimate way of branding yourself as a business. So funny enough, like I'll mention it now, it's in like early stages and we'll see what happens. But I had a meeting just the other day with, with an investor who seems very interested and in we are talking about setting up like an OnlyFans villa, which basically means renting like a, an insane villa in some tropical part of the world and having like creators sort of fly over and live in the villa. So there would be anywhere from like six to eight OnlyFans creators at one time all living together. And it would allow us to make just content so easily. So we would also have a media and production team who live there as well as our marketing team doing all of like the Tinders and the marketing and promotional stuff from our side, which would make everything like much easier to manage. And then by having everyone in a huge villa, it makes everything like really easy to manage and then we would also be looking at doing things like yacht days and like photo shoots on like in tropical places and things like that so i'm also exploring going down that route as well so i think yeah that's going to be like quite a big change is you're going to see some big names popping up in like the we're going to start to see some only fans agencies really build big brands around their around their only fans agency the other change that we're also seeing already and i actually predicted this about six months ago we're seeing a lot of like extensions and software plugins that are coming and being built on top of OnlyFans, which is a really positive thing, actually. And I have also started building one. We've just been a little bit slow to release it, but we're in like beta testing, basically, at the moment. We've got a small beta test running. And the reason for that is OnlyFans as like a software platform, considering the amount of money they make, is really not very good. The feature set is quite limited. The chatting functionality is also quite limited, really quite basic. There's quite limited like analytics and functionality to make sales of the platform much easier. And a part of me actually thinks that OnlyFans just actually don't understand how their platform is being used and the type of systems and processes that these agencies are implementing to build out a ton of money. Which is quite, I could be completely wrong, but yeah, we're seeing like a ton of extensions that are coming out to make it easier to manage like your OnlyFans profile. So I think we're going to start to see some things like CRMs that will extract everything and allow you to like engage with your subscribers in a much easier way and build out personal and automated messaging sequences. Kind of something like we would see with an automated email drip sequence. I think it would be quite a simple thing to build. And I've already actually seen like a couple of plugins going down that route, as well as like sales and analytics plugins to sit on top of OnlyFans. And then we're also seeing some software coming out on like the marketing and the promotional side of things as well. For the first time ever, I actually saw some software the other week that was built specifically for OnlyFans agencies. And it was helping to manage everything from payouts to managing multiple inboxes at one time, to managing commission for your chatters and for your sales staff. So these are like some quite interesting involvements within the space that I'm really keeping like quite a close eye on. And like I said, I'm actively building out like a software platform myself as well. Quite a lightweight Chrome extension just to sit on top, but basically just to make the management of an OnlyFans profile much more productive. It's actually just gonna be built originally internally for our team. And then I will look at like releasing it out in the, in the course. Yeah, they are like the, main questions that I get around like OnlyFans and OnlyFans space. Like overall, I really think it's a great time to be in the OnlyFans space. The only real negative of OnlyFans as a business is that the exit value of that your company will be valued at a significantly lower amount 
purely because it's in the adult industry. However, OnlyFans for me, it's like a cash flow business. Like I'm not looking to sell or exit. OnlyFans is great for generating cash flow. And given like the current market and like environment that we're in from like a, an investment point of view, we have assets pretty much every single asset class is on sale at the moment. And my strategy is to generate as much cash as possible, as much profit as possible. Over the next two years, I'm investing everything into various different asset classes. I'm putting off any like extravagant purchases. And I'm investing into asset classes that I see that are on sale, crypto being like the main one for me, but a couple of others as well. And I personally believe if you focus over the next two years on generating as much cash as possible, as much income as possible, and you deploy that into assets that are currently on sale and being like sold under value, you can add an extra zero onto your net worth really quite easily. In times of crisis, it also presents opportunities. I'm currently doing my best to take full advantage of that opportunity. As always, thank you so much for watching. If there's any questions that I missed, like these are questions that I get in my DMs, that I get on comments, that I get on Telegram on a recurring basis. So I thought I would cover those, but um, if there's anything that I missed out or yeah, any other questions, as always, feel free to leave a comment and I will be happy to get back to you.